But with Carbonite, no matter what happens to your computer, your files are safe. For just $59 a year, get unlimited online backup with Carbonite. That's peace of mind for just 16 cents a day. Go to CarboniteTV.com now to try it free for 15 days. No credit card required. And get two free months when you decide to buy. Start your free trial at CarbonitetV.com right now. Right, Apple flirting with Exxon as being the largest. Is that really a shocker? I think it makes sense. Apple is the best company in the world. Don't be greedy. Europe's going to blow up again any minute, so let's just take some profits, okay? Like I said, as always, the bull market summer. I promise you to find it just for you. Right here on Mid Money, I'm Jim Kramer. See you tomorrow. Hey, Larry, what do you have for us? Jimmy, is this a stock market sea change? Good evening, everyone. I'm Larry Kudlow. This is the Kudlow Report. Damn the torpedoes. Up Periscope. Full speed ahead. Ben Bernanke and the Fed to the rescue. Stocks had their best day in two years. Up 430 points on the Dow in a massive turnaround. Responding to the Fed's announcement that the zero interest rate target will be in place for two more years. That's right. Two more years. This is unprecedented. And I I want to know this evening if the Fed has triggered a real sea change turnaround in what was our very gloomy stock market. It is the key investment question. We're preempting CNBC primetime programming and calling up all the CNBC resources to bring you this amazing story. But first up, the markets rode the day like a bull, trading in a 650 point range, trading up 200 points, down 200 points for just the tenth time since the Dow's inception back in 1890. CNBC's Bob Pisani joins us with the rundown on today's hot market action. Good evening, Robert. I love that graphic. That bull is exactly what happened today. What a wild ride. The biggest story, of course, was the Fed statement today, and I've never seen so many arguments among traders trying to figure out exactly what the Fed meant and what they should be doing about it. Now, the initial read on this Fed statement was negative. It was a very dour outlook. I thought it was an honest outlook on the economy, on the economy but a bit dour. And more importantly, there was no real catnip that the traders like. No real direct references to QE3 or any other kind of stimulus that was out there. But put up the full screen. I'll show you what happened here because after we started reading the statement here, we got to that Fed, Fed pledge to keep rates low at least through mid-2013. And while everybody was debating that, Treasury yields dropped dramatically. The dollar dropped dramatically. This took a little bit of time. And then everybody on the floor looked at each other and said, good heavens, did the Fed just get kind of a quasi-QE3 there? without actually doing QE3, the Treasury yields and the dollar dropping. And that's when the market started to turn around. I don't want to make too much of it. It's not a real QE3, obviously. But the market interpreted that way. Take a look at the Treasury yields here because the 10-year is the star of the day. Look at that. Even Rick Santelli, great market observer that he was, was flabbergasted by that decline in the 10-year. You see it's come back here uh, in after hours. And the important thing elsewhere, Larry, in the last 24 hours, look at the S&P futures. We've moved one. 100 points. We were at 1080 on the S&P this time yesterday. We are now at 1180 on the S&P. Very rare. I've never seen that. Well, maybe once or twice in the 15 years I've been down here. Larry? All right. Well, I've never seen the Fed put a date certain on a two-year time horizon yep. for their target rate. And I've been around a while. Bob Pisani, hang on for a second. I want you to stay with us. Let's go to the rest of our panel. The question du jour, is this a stock market sea change? We have Anthony Scaramucci, managing partners at Skybridge Capital. James Bianco, president of Bianco Research. Brett Ahrens, columnist at the Wall Street Journal. Anthony, I want to go to you right here on the Set. Is this a one shot Fed stimulant, or given the stock market action today, is this a real sea change, a turnaround from the gloom and doom plunge we've had to live with in recent weeks? I, I can't say for certain it's a complete turnaround, but I think the Fed was unambiguous today. What are they saying? They're going to leave rates low. And I, I also got the feeling from them that they would go to QE3 if possible. They just don't want to use that bullet right now, Larry. There's just too much uncertainty in the marketplace. I do think that Bernanke's done an amazing job here. And had they solved that budget crisis prior to the last week of July, first couple of days of August, I don't think you would have had this calamity that we, we saw in the last three trading days. All right. So you're playing it from the bull side. I'm playing it from the bull side. Stocks are remarkably cheap. They're trading at 12 times and 10 times earnings response. 
respectively for 11 and 2012. The market overall is cheap. There's two trillion dollars of cash on the balance sheet of the U.S. <coughs> S&P 500. Uh, and that's very cheap. And when the uncertainty dies down, you'll see these stocks gravitate higher into next year's election. Brett Aarons, do you agree with Anthony's optimistic view? Do you think the Fed turned things around? Do you think the stock market is now in an abrupt reversal, rising rather than plunging? I can't quite believe this. I mean, I, nothing has changed. I mean, the reason they've come out and said we have to keep interest rates, you know, on the floor for the next two years is because the economy is in such dire st straits. You know, I've been on break uh, for the last uh, four or five weeks, so I've been watching things from a little bit from afar, and it sort of baffled me how everyone seems to be sort of amazed at statements of the blinding obvious. People have been shocked to discover that large sections of Europe are broke. They've been shocked to discover that our uh, budget is uh, totally messed up, our political system is broken, and uh, that Americans are up to their eyeballs in debt, which is why the economy is growing so slowly, if at all. In fact, it's probably, I mean, I hesitate to say this, but it may well be in, in recession again. You know, all they've done is they've come and said, we're going to throw more free money at it. What's interesting is that prior to this statement, the Russell 2000 had basically lost all of the gains that Ben Bernanke had managed to engineer. I mean, yeah, but it was hot as a pistol today. It was up 6.9 percent today. Yeah, it was the single up, biggest that's increase. That's a risk-on trade. Let me go to Jim no, Bianco. Jim, welcome back to the program. First of all, suddenly no one's talking about the S&P downgrade, and Brett Aaron's reminds us there's still a recession threat. I accept the recession threat, even though I'm not in that camp. James, what's your take on the story? It's more of the same of what QE2 was. It's a manipulation of the markets. We're going to hold rates low for two years. Hopefully, the carry trade is going to ram Treasury yields down so low, it's going yep. to force everybody out into risk assets. And then at yep. some point, yep. we'll have a day of reckoning when they try and raise rates. We'll have a calamity in the bond market, but that's for another day. But, that's no, that's for, happened today. That's for another two years, Jim. I mean, that's the way I read that. <laughs> it, 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 we're going to have some Fed watching with the old Fed heads in a few moments. But on this point, I want to know your best guess. Will this Fed move? A, keep us out of recession, and B, put us on a new bull track. Uh, for A, it will not keep us out of recession any more than QE2 helped the economy. It won't. It will maybe help the stock market over the short term, kind of like QE2 helped the stock market over the short term. There it was a few months. This might only be a few days. There's no money printing involved here, yeah. and this is going to be the least of the three that's big a, moves the that, Fed has that's done. That's a very key yeah. point. The, it, you can say quasi-QE3, but there is no real money printing, so there is no real inflation that, that's going on. Let me just respond to Anthony's comment on the, on the earnings front. It's true stocks are cheap right now, but the earnings numbers are going to be coming down, Anthony. I don't think you're going to yeah. see $100 on the S&P like the consensus is right now. But Once that comes let, down, let, stocks may not Earnings, cheap. But let's cut the earnings by 10 percent. You've got an earnings yield on the S&P 500 for next year between 7 and 8 percent right. in a zero interest rate environment. So what happens is there'll be tactical asset allocation into the S&P 500 going into the election, recognizing that the American electorate is, wants to change management. Larry, we have a championship football team, 153 million people working in this country, creating $15 trillion of GDP. We just have bad management. Uh, Brett okay. Aaron, and, and Brett, it's time to fire the management. All right. Uh, Bob Pisani, let me just go back to you. What trader buzz, I mean, if you have an opinion, please express it, but trader buzz, is this a one-time shot? For example, bonds, treasury bonds got to almost 2 percent. They closed around two and a quarter. On the day, they were off by seven basis points, Robert. That's the way I read it on the sheets. Now, you have a decent retail sales report later this week, a decent industrial production report. Bond rates will go up by 15 or 20 percent, like the, you know, the flip of a coin, the snap of the fingers. So why is this Fed move such a big deal? Well, you're, uh, the comment made earlier is the key here. Essentially, the way, once the, once traders saw what happened, happen to Treasury yields, they realize that in, that traders are going to be forced into higher risk assets. And that's that's what I meant when I said at the top here, you're getting a quasi QE3 out of this. Not a literal one, but a quasi QE3. The outlook from the Fed was was definitely dour. I thought, by the way, it was a very adult outlook. I thought that the statement was very, very well written and very honest in its assessment, a very different kind of Fed statement that we've seen uh, than in the past. Uh, but I think by and large, right now, the market's trying to figure out exactly what's the 
the implication of having Treasury yields this low? Did you see the 10 year, by the way, it came back rather noticeably? Yes. Yields moved up off of that. Yes, no, that I decline. said it, it well, got to almost sense. 2%. It the closed Fed, around two and a quarter. Why would the, it was down seven basis exactly. points for the day? A decent retail sales number later this week will knock it up 10, 15 basis points. It, I don't know. Brett Aarons, let me ask you about another important va development today $79 a barrel oil. Gasoline prices coming down, oil coming down. That is a tax cut for the American economy. Uh, some people estimate that could put $150 billion in consumer pockets and knock out your Brett Aaron's recession scenario. What do you think about that? Well, listen, no, falling oil and falling gas prices are very good. I mean, that's some relief for the consumer who is pretty much out of firepower. Um, I'm not disputing that at all. I hope we do avoid a recession. I noticed that housing has been coming down uh, sharply, though, I, as it happens, I'm down in Miami at the moment, and I can tell you there are some signs, maybe I'm early, but some signs that the housing uh, here at the epicenter of the collapse have actually maybe stabilized and heading back up again. We'll see whether that survived the events of the last uh, few weeks. Listen, I'm not... I'm not disputing that we might avoid a recession. My argument is that this is more sort of financial engineering of the stock market. It's more basic, basically forcing people um, to buy risk assets. Uh, you know, we've seen what's happened with gold. What is interesting about gold, although I, I have absolutely no way of, of valuing it with any confidence, and nor does anybody else, um, every time people tell me everyone's in gold, I look around the room and I ask uh, who actually has some, and you'd be amazed how few people actually own this. I suspect gold could be heading a lot higher. Uh, as people realize, they're going to be getting no interest on uh, cash for right. uh, another two years. Uh, let me just go on the way out. Uh, Jim Bianco. No one today was talking about the S&P downgrade anymore. Are you concerned, however, that the S&P downgrade will cause greater damage in the economy and hence the stock market? In your judgment, is the S&P downgrade fear off the board? Was that a one-day psychological spook factor, or are we done with the S&P downgrade? No, I don't think we're done with the S&P downgrade or Moody's or Fitch. I suspect that they're going to go before the end of the year. There's a high chance of it. Larry, we have millions of contracts, financial contracts written in this country that have the letters AAA in them. We don't have AAA securities anymore. They're AA plus. Things like trade settlement, repo transactions, clearing of other trades, and warehousing of securities are all going to have to be rethunk now that we don't have AAA rated institutions anymore. And it's going to continue to be a drag on the economy. It's not Lehman 2. It's just a body blow to an already weak economy. It's going to make credit creation a little bit harder. All right, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Anthony right. Scaramucci, James Bianco, and Brett Ahrens. Bob Pisani is coming back in just a few moments to help us some more tonight. Coming up, folks, the big story. Bernanke to the rescue. Stocks cheer the Fed's decision to stick with a near zero interest rate for another two years. Quite remarkable. I've been around. I've never seen anything like it. And the Fed may have taken a giant step towards real QE3, buying more bonds and putting more cash into the economy, just creating money out of thin air. We've assembled a powerful panel, former Fed bigwigs. Some of them are dissenters to today's Fed decision. We have Wayne Angel. We have Lee Hoskins. We have Bill Ford. And we have the great Steve Leisman. Stay with us for the Fed head discussion. And don't forget, free market capitalism is the best path to prosperity. I admit, I'm searching for a little free market capitalism. I'm Larry Kudlow. I'll be right back. Search with me, everybody. Tomorrow on Squawk Box. This is the type of market that you just can't step away from. You know, from. we're going to be talking a lot about what's going on in the markets. It just seems like a seesaw every single Pick moment. Pick your market. Gold, uh, foreign currencies. What's going to happen in Europe? Who's S&P going to downgrade next? Right. On Squawk Box. Okay, people. Show me the best way to design a vacation on a budget with Expedia. Make it work. Booking a flight by itself is an uh-oh. See if we can stitch together a better deal. That's a hint, Antoine. Ooh, see what Anandra did? Booking your flight and hotel at the same time gets you prices hotels and airlines won't let Expedia show separately. Book it. Major wow factor. Where you book matters. Expedia. Introducing the Schwab mobile app. It's Schwab at your fingertips wherever, whenever you want. One login lets you monitor all of your balances and transfer between accounts so your money can move as fast as you do. Check out your portfolio, track the market with live updates, and execute trades anywhere and anytime the inspiration hits you. Even deposit checks right from your phone. Just take a picture, hit deposit, and you're done. Open an account today and put Schwab Mobile to work for you. I went on Ancestry.com and found out my great-great-grandmother had five children and only one survived. 
can be so easy to forget how lucky you are. Visit Ancestry.com right now and discover the world's largest online family history resource. Call 866-590-CASH and ask for the do-over refi. If you refinanced your mortgage in the last 18 months, Cash Call will redo it at a lower rate, guaranteed, with no closing costs. We'll lower your rates with no closing costs. Just call 866-590-CASH. Important information for catheter users from Liberty Medical. You'll never have to reuse catheters again. Depending on your coverage, Liberty Medical can provide you with up to 200 catheters a month at little or no cost to you. Liberty provides caring support, and they make the process easy. They work directly with your doctor, Medicare, or your insurance provider, and there are no upfront costs. Liberty also provides free shipping and a no-risk guarantee. Liberty offers a wide variety of catheters and catheter accessories from top brands, including Bard, Cure, Coloplast, Hollister, and also Rochester Medical. They come in multiple options for individual preferences, including convenient self-lubricating and antibacterial catheters. Now Liberty offers the Magic 3 catheter, the only 100% silicone device available direct to consumers. Call or visit LibertyCatheter.com. That's LibertyCatheter.com to receive free home delivery of your catheter supplies today. Welcome back to CNBC. Continuing coverage of the markets, the Dow up 430 points today. This is a special edition of the Cuddler Report and the theme, Ben Bernanke to the rescue. In a startling move today, the FOMC announced that its zero, zero interest rate Fed funds target would be extended through, get this, through the middle of 2013, two years from now. And yes, it wound up triggering a massive stock market rally. Meanwhile, three inflation hawk Fed presidents dissented. Fisher, Kocher Lakota, and Plosser. They all said thumbs down. First time that many have dissented since back in 1992. So let's talk. Here to discuss what it all means, former Fed Graybeards, Lee Hoskins, former Cleveland Federal Reserve President, former Federal Reserve Governor Wayne Angel, and with us here in studio is CNBC's senior economics reporter Steve Leisman, former Atlanta Fed President Bill Ford will likely join us in just a moment. Lee Hoskins, zero interest rate for two more years, a date certain. I started my career at the New York Fed, and I have been a Fed watcher on and off for, I don't know, 35 some odd years. Never seen anything like it. Is this, in your judgment, the right move for the central bank? This was an audacious uh, move that clearly pleased the market, but it was bad monetary policy. We've been doing zero interest policy now for 30 months, and look what it's produced. Hardly any real growth, hardly any employment gain. So now we're going to continue this for 24 more months. We're risking Fed credibility, we're risking misallocation of resources, and we're risking misallocation of capital. All those are bad things. The risks just aren't worth it. Wayne Angel, do you agree with Lee Hoskins' scathing criticism of today's move? Well, I agree with the criticism, but I don't agree with why. Uh, the market didn't like it. The market disliked it. The market turned down because the market thought, what in the world are they messing around with the, with the statement about 2013? The market thought the Fed was being too pessimistic. The Fed should have been optimistic and said there is no chance of our slipping into a recession. And we have the right policy in place. Do you believe that, that there's no chance of a recession? Oh, absolutely. That's what I argued with Greenspan in 87. I had to argue with him for four months because he thought after the 87 stock crash, we surely were going to have a recession. And I kept saying no. And I, I, then I began voting no, and he, he then began to pay attention. Steve Leisman, what happened today, and was it the right move in your judgment? The, the Fed made a commitment, well, not a commitment, a forecast to keep rates low through mid-2013. I'm afraid the market may have misunderstood it just a little bit. It is not a firm commitment. It's not a pledge. It's a forecast. It means the Fed will not be fast well, on the trigger. Well, they said it. Huh? They wrote it. But if you read the statement, it, it, is, a, it is a forecast based upon Con a series of outcomes that slack remains in the economy right. and inflation. What happened, they downgraded. They downgraded their view of the economy, they and they also their downgraded their, the their inflation worries. Is exactly. that fair? Exactly. It came down. Oil fell down to eighty dollars. Um, I think what happened is the Fed needed stronger tools. 
QE2 did not quite work out the way the market had hoped or the way the Fed had hoped. And I think the, the Fed always needs the market to get in front of it. How do you do that if QE2 didn't work? Additional bond purchase was not the answer. In this case, a firm commitment was a way. You know what the, what the Fed's trying to do. Bring forward future outcomes. And that's what it did today. And it kept rates low. A two-year note, Larry, has now become an overnight note Just with a little about, bit of an asterisk. It's about 20 right. basis points, right. basically. Right. And I think, I think Bernanke was, was spooked by what he saw in the forecast from the Fed's Death. Lee Hoskins, despite your opposition to it, I want to ask you if this kind of move can help the economy. Yeah, it has a chance to lay the foundation for uh, continued growth, like Wayne suggested, but I don't think anybody can predict whether we're going to be uh, slipping into a recession or not, nor should the Fed worry about whether we have a quarter or two of negative growth because it can't do anything about it. We're well into this recovery, um, in, and then we're into the medium term at least, and there's hardly anybody sitting around that table at 21st and C that, that believes that the Fed can control anything but inflation over time. But why do they so, obsess so much about unemployment? about jobs and about GDP growth for the economy. I mean, I know that you would like him to have a pure price inflation target. You know what? I basically agree with you. But they don't agree with either of us, Lee. And I guess the question I'm asking is, <laughs> objectively speaking, and I want to insert this point. This looks to me like the major giant step towards QE3. Next month, full-fledged, bond buying, cash injecting, money supply creating. This is a major step toward QE3. Will that work? Is that appropriate? It, it won't work. It's not appropriate, but it may, it's been clear from this Fed, except for the dissenters, that they're willing to do anything to try to exploit the Phillips curve. And, and that's all this is about. And that, that should have been had a stake driven through its heart years ago, but it seems, it seems to keep coming back. Wayne Angel, um, three dissents, okay, three dissents. And that is very unusual. Dick Fisher, uh, a, an inflation hawk, absolutely. Charles Plosser, an inflation hawk. And uh, Coach Lakota from the Minneapolis Fed, who's rather more a moderate, but was the swing vote. Are you surprised this is the only three dissent meeting we've had going back all the way to November uh, 1992, Wayne? As a former Federal Reserve governor, what does this tell you? Is there chaos in the Fed? Are there divisions in the Fed? Around that table, are things getting tougher and tougher for Mr. Bernanke. No, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Uh, I think that the stock market's reaction, the, the stock market didn't like what the Fed said, and but then when the Fed, when the stock market thought about it, they said, but wait, the economy is still like we see it being. We think this corporate profit string we're on is going to continue. Wayne. Wayne, you, you know that every central banker has to really get that balance between the description of the economy and the prescription for the economy. I think the market read the first half of that statement, which was the description of the economy. It was dour. And then it got the prescription, which was this set interest rate for two years and it liked it and it turned around. I just want to remind you, Wayne, that you may have former Federal Reserve in front of your name, but in the intro, Larry used great for me, so now you can respond. He is great. And Wayne Angel, you're a legend <laughs> in your own time. And Lee Hoskins, you ain't chopped liver either, so I don't want to get into that game. I want to get you on the record. Yeah. Is this a giant step towards QE3? I no. think it, I'm asking my I'm asking yeah. the great Steve Leisman. Then I'll get back to the legend, Wayne Angel. And, and great I, one. I, I think it, it is definitely clearing the brush out of right, the way right. for QE3. It another is month possible. of bad numbers. Another I think month another of bad month numbers. of bad numbers, they'll do it. I don't think it necessarily, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. Yet. Wayne Angel, do you agree with that? Another month of bad numbers, full-fledged QE3, quantitative easing. The Fed buys more bonds, expands their balance sheet, injects more cash into the economy. No, they're not going to do that, or they would have done it today. So they're not going to do QE3. Uh, Lee is right. QE2 didn't do much, and I don't think the Bernanke is going to want to step up to QE3. Uh, Lee Hoskins, I want you to weigh in on the three dissents. What does that do to the center of gravity at the Fed? Can these three, led by Dick Fisher, a confirmed inflation hawk, can he stop QE3? Have they made a statement? After the cooling off period, uh, Lee, will they be out there? Mr. Fisher and Mr. Plosser in particular, maybe Mr. Coach Lakota, maybe not. But will those guys be out there giving speeches against QE3? Oh, I think they will. I mean, I don't think they, Plosser's already clearly indicated, so is Fisher, uh, that they're not a fan of QE2. 
So they, they'll clearly defend their, their position. So I'm sure the meeting was not pleasant. Uh, nobody likes to dissent uh, because it's such a collegial group. Uh, but these three are now dissented on this issue. They're good dissents because it doesn't lock them in for the future. It just says, we don't like the wording here. Now we can get on to, with business. At a minimum, what the Fed should have done or, and, and the dissenters should have argued for is an inflation target uh, tied to this two-year statement, so uh -huh. an explicit target, so that we could get on with getting back to normalizing interest can, rates. I mean, we this aren't going to nor mm -hmm. normalize interest rates, my friend Lee Hoskins, right. for I don't know how I long, got maybe you. in I, my I just, lifetime. I just want to point out that the dissenters were happy to say extended period. Their concern was over putting a date certain. On. Yes, I think it that's wasn't right. like they wanted to turn policy right now and, and talk. Right, we got to get out of here. I'll just well, add once this. again, Lee Hoskins is right. I am going to use the dollar as my metric. Gold is already roaring, but I'm going to use the dollar in the next couple of weeks. If the dollar starts to falter, then I'm going to say this is the wrong policy bet, and they should absolutely <laughs> not do QE3 because the depreciating dollar under QE2 jacked up oil and commodity prices and did a lot of damage to. The economy. That's my cap to this excellent uh, segment. Legend Wayne Angel, great Lee Hoskins, great Steve Leisman. I'm sorry Bill Ford couldn't get hooked up. I'm Larry Kudlow. And next up on the Kudlow Report, what's all this talk about the S&P downgrade being our Lehman?